small role don't ever say that and um you know it's my first movie i've never done a movie before this is my first movie you guys know I, I i'm still like very very new to acting um i was hoping to do more acting this year but you know obviously the we had a, a panoramic within the you know within the the entertainment industry with the shutdown and you know um all of the the striking that was happening um, but the strike is over, and as soon as the strike was over, I got this call, and um, so I'm really, really excited. Uh, it is a holiday movie. Most likely, it's going to come out next year. Uh, Raven Goodwin is in the movie. She's the main character. Y'all, she was such a sweetheart. Like, there was a moment while we were shooting where my feet were hurting me, and I think she could see it, and she had asked me, she's like, are your feet hurting? I was like, oh, no, they getting there. And, you know, she's like, you don't want to change shoes? I was like, no, I'm okay. And next thing you know, I heard her tell um, the AD, hey, uh, can we please get Jessie Wu's comfort shoes over to her? Her feet hurt. Like, can we get it to her now? And I was like, oh, my God. Like, not a black women's looking out for black women's. There are black women's. Y'all killing me with this shit, man. Um... It just was really, really nice to feel seen. And, you know, like I've been watching Raven for years. So to be able to work with her and she was so sweet. And, you know, when we wrapped up, she's like, you know, you're really amazing. I hope to work with you again. I'm like, you know, how sometimes people say that and they're like, you like, they, they, you know, they, they, they act like they, it, it feels like they pull the shit. But no, I could tell she was really sincere about it. Um, Mario's in the movie too. And y'all, like, I. I'm such a big fan of Mario. Like, I almost cried meeting him. Like, I couldn't believe it. Like, you know how you, like, you grow up singing somebody's songs, you love them, and then you meet them in person, and it's like, you're a real person, like, with a heartbeat. This is insane. And he knew who I was. I was like, <laughs> like, this, 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 what? It's just, it's so weird, like, when you meet people that you've just adored your entire life, and then, like, they know your name, like, not where everybody knows your name. It's giving cheers, bitch. <laughs> you want to go where everybody knows your name. Do, 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 do. Like, not as giving cheers. Um, he was also amazing to work with. So it's a holiday movie. Um, I only have one scene, but my scene is literally the climax of the movie. And I get to speak Creole in it, which is amazing. And I mean, people broke character and laughed when I would sing my when I was saying my lines. Um, I did some improv and it really worked out. So I'm just really excited. And you know, going into December, I had told myself I was gonna shut it down. I didn't want to do anything, to be honest. I just felt like, okay, like for 2024, I really just need to like just be silent for a minute and just see like what I'm going to do with 2024 and, and I need to be in tune with what God is trying to do in my life. But like my phone has to stop ringing and I'm like, okay, you know, the shutdown is over. Everybody's just like getting to work and 
you know? And so it's like, okay, I have to answer these calls because everybody's getting back to work. But y'all, I'm going back to Ghana. So once I'm on that flight, baby, I don't know what the fuck y'all gonna do. I'm out of here until next year, <laughs> okay? Um, but um, I'm really excited about this movie. I, I look forward to next December watching that movie and remembering that that was my first movie and it catapulted me into other roles. I really believe it's going to catapult me into other things. Um, you know, I recently had a, a, a meeting with a, a really big name in the industry who is a producer, a director. He's in the big leagues. Um, and one of the reasons why we had this meeting is because he saw my a la carte footage, which is crazy because he was being pitched one of my castmates. But in the scenes where he was being pitched this castmate, I was eating all them scenes up. And he was like, no, I need, I need to talk to her. What she got going on? Like, <laughs> you know, and so you never know where your stuff is going to end up. And anyway, I still like to say in the beginning, I said it's a small role, but small roles turn into big roles. Small opportunities turn into huge opportunities. And I feel like if you're responsible with the small things that God gives you, then he can trust you with the bigger things. If you show him, hey, are you going to be faithful with, with this right here? You know, are you going to have faith as small as a mustard seed? Are you going to do what I tell you to do with this right here? If you do that, then I can trust you with the bigger things. And so that's what I'm looking forward to for next year. So I'm really, really excited. I'm so happy I got to spend time with Raven, Mario, um, I met Sincerely, uh, too. She was sweet. Everybody was great. And it just was a great experience. And I left feeling very fulfilled because, like, everybody kept telling me good job. So, yeah. So, I shot my first movie. Yay! Before we get into the tea for today, make sure you check out Lilim. Make sure you check out Lilim. Lilim is my song. Um, the video is in the description box. I'll be trying to see how I could add the link to the video here, right here during the video, but I don't know, but I am able to add it at the end for sure. But anyway, just make sure if you haven't heard Lilim yet, if you haven't watched the video yet, please watch it. If you have, watch it again and share it with a friend, please. Okay. All right, y'all. Let's get into the tea for today. Hallelujah. All right, y'all. Let's get into these topics for today. J-Lo's still full of shit. Who is your 2023 woman of the year? My 2023 woman of the year. Ooh. I think my woman of the year. I mean, all of them, right? They're all pretty amazing. I mean, I would have to say Taylor's pretty, you know, kind of killing it this year. Um, yeah, I would say Taylor, maybe. Yeah. Sister is doing her best. Sister is doing her best, but her best is not enough. <laughs> like, it was killing her. Ide pain her like it was Ide, it was painting her for her to just say Beyonce like bitch first of all you got on Renee's whole outfit you got on Renee's whole outfit you is literally wearing the outfit from the my house cover sis like are you for real and then as she's sitting there she wants to so bad break into the damn Beyonce Renaissance uh, run that we all know. she can't do that because she can't sing remember she was she's the real uh what's her name uh ursula j-lo we ain't forget you the real human version of ursula bitch out here stealing bitches voices bitch we remember what the fuck you did to ashanti we remember how you arielled ashanti bitch throughout your the whole first leg of your career all right well, let me not say the first leg of your career, because the first leg of your career, it was Tommy Matola with his petty ass. He was trying to get back at Mariah, who still doesn't know you 23 years later. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you asked Mariah if she know J-Lo, and still, 25 years later, I still don't know. She still doesn't know you. But J-Lo wanted so bad to give us a damn uh, Beyonce run, and she can't. You know why? Because Ashanti wasn't there. 
Ashanti got a song that says, I'm not always there when you call, but I'm always on time. You wasn't on time tonight, Ashanti. Where were you when J-Lo needed your runs? Where were you when J-Lo needed your vocals? Somewhere getting knocked up by Nelly. Somewhere. Mm, where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Mm, if you want to go on the by me, girl. Ashanti busy, baby. She is knocked up. She knocked up. Won't let her out. No. Nelly won't let her out. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck going on. J-Lo ain't shit. Next. <laughs> and now she humming off key. How the fuck do you hum off key? Bitch, are you for real? <laughs> Next. Let's move on. Okay, y'all. So watch Jazzy is currently on her third time's a charm comedy tour. And so if y'all don't know, I'm the third one and this is his sixth child. Mm. Someone said, ooh. <laughs> like, couldn't have been me. All right, until the rich nigga put that pressure on me. <laughs> Hieroglyphics. We are not in the beginning of time back in Egypt. Like, what is going on? This man be writing, like, you know, like when you go to when you go to Egypt, they be having the the pictures and shit, and they be having the letters that go like this and shit like that. Like, why do all Cam Newton's captions be looking like? <laughs> like, what? Why do all his captions be looking like that? It's just really weird. She ate. She ate that. I think that. The best thing you can do when the internet is trolling you is just to troll yourself. Like, I'm sorry, this is funny. First of all, she out here wearing Cameron's, uh, what's his name? Cameron, Cameron, Cam, uh, Cameron Newton's jersey. That man ain't played since Kaepernick was kneeling. Okay? It's been a man. It's been a man. All right? He hasn't played in a hundred years. It's been a minute. Okay? But like she said, her man got a hundred million dollars. Period. My man ain't played in a hundred years, but guess what? He got a hundred million dollars, all right? Um, here's the thing. Say what you want. Obviously, we've seen all the commentary. I really feel like Jasmine being a baby mama to Cam Newton is not the same as being a baby mama, like in the general sense. Jasmine Brown is a very talented young lady who has been working her ass off for years. I mean, do y'all remember her from 50 Central? I mean, she used to do content. I think she's from the crib, she's from Miami. Like she's a hustler. She did stand up, she had Toya turn up, like, you know, and now she has a successful show on BET Plus and she's under the Tyler Perry umbrella as a writer and creator of her own show. She gonna be fine. She gonna be okay. She gonna be okay. She gonna be fine. I just, for me, the only two critiques I would have is we see how that man, a hundred million dollar man, is trying to take a car away from his previous baby mama, who he cheated on with his second baby mama, okay? We see a pattern in his treatment of these women. We've also seen 
you know, the interviews where Jasmine talked about, you know, being a submissive person to her man. And how she'd, be, she'd be rocking his ass to sleep. Rock a bye, baby. She, she'd be rocking by his ass to sleep. His big old, like, that's crazy to me. That was crazy to me. But she talked about how, you know, she knows when he's hungry. She knows how to pack his, pack his luggage, unpack his luggage upon entry from, you know, from being outside. Like, she's very submissive to him. But she never really shared anything about him showing her any reciprocity so woman or woman you know i don't really have much advice for you as far as motherhood is concerned i don't have any children um i hope to be a mother one day um but i would just say girl just be realistic be realistic with yourself just understand what you're walking into this man has clear patterns of behavior and you've decided to accept that. And so accept it. Accept it. The writing is on the wall. The hieroglyphics are on the wall, bitch. The writing is on the wall. We all see what this is. You see what this is. Act accordingly. Prepare yourself and your child for whatever come what may. For whatever come what may. Prepare yourself and your child and don't be coming to the internet crying and carrying on should things fall apart. Don't do it. This will not be a safe place for you. You see how they're carrying on right now? Keep that shit to yourself. Keep that shit to yourself. Should things fall apart, bitch, super glue that shit for the internet. That's all I'm going to say. But other than that, I wish her a, a, a great pregnancy. She looks she looks amazing. She looks beautiful. Her body's banging. Um, she looks great. And she looks like she's having a good time. So you know what? Do you, sus? Next. Okay, y'all. Let's get into the next subject matter of this video. So I have saw Kevin, uh, Kev on stage. Uh, shout out to Kev. He's so damn funny. I, I love me some Kev on stage. I love his wife. I just, I love their whole family but anyway did a video on this girl um her name's winnie parker have you guys seen this girl winnie parker she keeps going viral and so i saw him make a video uh responding to a video that she made i also saw a video that um jackie Ina made in response to the video that she made because in her original video she um mentioned jackie Ina in it so for those of you guys who are not familiar with Winnie Parker and what's going on, I'm gonna play the video and then we're gonna come back. I'm gonna say something controversial and I don't care because I've been thinking about it a lot. It is better to have a following over a black following. Before I go any further, this does not mean that I do not appreciate the people that support me and love me, okay? That's not what this means. But it is very obvious that black people do not really support black creators. And we wonder why we don't get these huge creators the way that we get these huge creators. And then we complain about it. But we're not supporting each other. And the black creators that do have millions of followers, have a huge fan base, usually have a mixed following. For example, Jackie Aina, believe it or not. Who the fuck is Jackie Aina? <laughs> Community following. Monet, a large following. Fanita, a large following. Black women are f mean. I'm gonna say something controversial, and I don't care because I did. So, what, just watching this and watching it again. I'm gonna say something controversial. Like, the girl knew what she was doing. She knew what she was doing. When I went to her TikTok, she has a following. So, I think this girl knew damn well what she was doing. Black female rage puts a lot of eyes on you. Let's just be honest, right? Like, do you guys not notice how so many men, for instance, have built followings off of black female rage like uh what's his name the the nigga who's who's a worm food now um the motherfucker who used to get in the in front of the camera in a suit but you know didn't even have a home the one who 
get, tell y'all y'all were fours. Black women, they were dark, dark skin women, they were fours. What was his name? Kevin Samuels. This man built an entire following based on black female anger. And that actually negates what she's saying because come to find out, even he said it when he was alive, that the bigger bulk of his following was black women. Black women were tuning in every week, hanging on his every word and using his advice towards dating, towards pursuing marriage, towards pursuing, you know, they like, they were like, <laughs> having a black female following is actually the most powerful following, which is why this woman is going as viral as she is because she mentioned black women. When I saw this, honestly, I think just like everybody, I didn't understand for the life of me why she kept whispering white. Dude, white. white. It's like, sister, slavery is over. Why are we whispering white in 2023? The click click is feeling we? Click click no feeling we, sister. Look at her. Say, say that shoo shoo shoo. Now, dear. Why are we whispering? I couldn't understand that. And I think at the surface, I was like, well, even her whispering white, obviously, like, you're whispering that because you want to be cautious to the white people. You want to be cautious to the white people who will come across this, but you won't dare be as cautious when talking about black people and black women. When it was time for you to say black women, you said it with your titties. You was coming for black women you said, with your whole titties, the, your two big titties. You said it. Black women. Black women during black women's. Y'all killing me with this shit, man. You said it with your entire uh, 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 with double D bra. Um, but still for the life of me, I just couldn't understand. I was like, what? Maybe it's not just white supremacy. Maybe it's something else. And I just kept scouring. And then I found this clip. Let's start from the top. So my name is Winnie. I'm 29. I still live at home with my parents. I think the reason why I live at home with my parents still is because there is a deep rooted fear that I'm going to go out there on my own and struggle the way my parents did when I was younger. And I saw that, okay? I have one child. I do not enjoy being a mother. There's positive things, but there, I feel like the negative outweighs the positive. Love my kid though. I'm currently dealing with a health scare right now. I've never been an unhealthy person, but for the past couple of months, my hands have been turning yellow. I have jaundice and I have no idea why. I've also found blood in my number two and I'm always constipated. I do have health insurance, but the healthcare system sucks. So I'm currently single and I genuinely have a fear of dying alone. I've been doing social media for about six or seven years now and I don't enjoy it anymore. I'm burnt out. And finally, a lot of the drama in my life comes from my family. It, it, it's, it's, just, it's just so much shit going on. It's so much shit going on. Soon as I saw that hard wig, I knew what time it was. Soon as I saw that hard wig, I knew what time it was. A hard wig on a black woman tells you everything you need to know. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. That hard wig told me everything I need to know. It was sister telling us that she's 29 when she is clearly, clearly every bit of 43. Let's just be for real, okay? Um, and then her letting us know that she finds blood in her doodle. Like, <laughs> what are we talking about? What, what are we talking about? I'm a mother of one and I hate being a mother. 
but I'm living at home with my parents at 29 because I don't want to go outside and struggle, but all my drama comes from my family. Girl, if you're going to sit your hard wig ass the fuck down, I see exactly what the fuck this is. This was definitely a scheme that Todd set up for you to get more black women eyes on you because somewhere, somewhere, is some pink toes afoot. Girl, why I'm scrolling on my For You page and y'all went go find this girl, baby daddy? Why did y'all go find this girl, baby daddy? I just want to know how y'all found this because she don't got him on none of his, none of her platform. TikTok, Instagram, the girl ain't got her baby daddy nowhere. She didn't say this several times that her baby daddy is white. But where did y'all get this from? Y'all is the feds. I don't want to be on nobody's bad side because the way y'all go digging shit up, bitch. Girl. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I know. I know. I know. But I love pink toes wig when I see it. And I ain't just talking about just any pink toes. I'm talking about the pink toes that you see in 30 degree weather down the Whole Foods. Them pink toes. It's a, cer it's a certain pink toe community. I knew as soon as I saw her wig, I knew what community she belonged to. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. And then I kept scouring some more. And bitch, I found it. Sister is knee deep in the Confederate pink toe community. I knew it. Like, you're not gonna try to scan. You ain't got a lot of me, baby, talking about black women don't support black women. Bitch, you ain't got a lot of me, Craig. You ain't got a lot, Craig. I know exactly whose community you belong to, bitch. And that's the community you are truly vying for. But they won't let you in. Because, bitch, they are... <laughs> Are you dumb? The writing's on the wall, bitch. Are you fucking dumb? Or are you dumb? For the life of me, I let me tell you something else. I and I don't know this. I don't know her white baby daddy situation, but I know enough about her white baby daddy situation through that last video when she let us know that she's 29, she living at home because she don't want to struggle. Bitch, why are you struggling with a white baby daddy? Can you black women explain that to me? Now, I, I really want I really want an explanation. Because first of all, I'm going to start right here. And some of y'all going to drive me for this. But I've never understood white poor people. I've never understood that. That's something I've never understood. And I never will. And nobody will ever make me understand it. You are white. Why are you poor? My thunder week. You are white. You, you are white. Why are you poor? Kounia meti ebe silan se nan kon, se nan salal tombe. Se kon nan kominote salal tombe. E pi kounia li fache paske li vle ke se moun tan koum. Se moun avek po sa li vle pou nou si potel. Men nan se se nan kominote salal la ge boubou ni. La chire moun dal ba e kominote sa. You can't tell me that you split your pussy wide open for Thomas Jefferson and now you mad because we ain't we ain't supporting you. <laughs> it's like, are you fucking kidding me? That don't make no motherfucking sense. Why are y'all out here with wiggers and white men that are leaving y'all at the poorhouse? Y'all, I, I need to understand that frame of mind. Because there's no way I'm going to invest in a hard wig, soft life and end up with this. Down to my parents' house with my son. And I hate being a mama to a half, a half confederate baby. <laughs> there's no way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. No. No, ma'am. And let me tell you something else. As someone who has offended black women before, during black women's y'all killing me with this shit month, the last community you want to piss off on the internet is black women's. 
Black women are lawyers by nature. They gonna find your shit. They gonna fi <laughs> find your ass. They gonna find you. <laughs> they gonna find you. They gonna be waiting for your ass at the door. Now look at you. Supposedly all this happened because she had a Macy's campaign that she did and the campaign didn't get enough looks and that's what made her mad. Well, girl, now Macy's was supposed to do another uh, partnership with her and they dropped her ass. I just got an email from the brand for Macy's and they basically are saying that like because of the amount of hate that I got on the video, like they're reading through the comments that they're probably not gonna work with me again. That's basically what they're saying in a nutshell. So that's always fun. It's a good time. And guess what? Now you're not gonna get anything. You're not gonna get anything. And you're on the internet calling black women mean. Learn something from this. I'm sorry. As soon as I saw that hard wig, I said, okay. Soon as I saw that hard wig, I said, yeah, I see what community she really want to be part of. I, 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 and then here she come trying to explain her baby's daddy uh, having a Confederate flag all over his IG. You guys are trying to make sense of everything and piece shit together. And so that means going to my child's father's Instagram and finding a photo of him with the Confederate flag in the background. And this actually is a pretty, this turns out, this is actually a pretty positive story, right? Um... <clears throat> He knows how I feel about the Confederate flag. He's known forever. He knows how I feel about that shit. And um, on another note as well, he's a grown man. We haven't been together in years. I cannot tell him what to do. He can post what he likes. No, I can't. I don't have control over that, okay? We haven't been together for years. But of late, his face has been plastered on TikTok because of that situation. He's asked, like, why is it such a big deal? Why... Why is my face plastered all over TikTok? Um, and I'm explaining to him that it's because of the narrative that it spins about me, right? People want to believe I'm this anti-black anti Candace Owens, whatever type person, okay? Um, and so we, you know, had, we had a discussion about, about the Confederate flag and we talked about it and we've, we've talked about it for years on end and I've, I've told him my feelings and thoughts and it just never really clicked. It never really made sense to him as to why as to why it's not the flag that you want to be representing okay and he listened to what i said did some research and came back and was like okay i can see what you're saying i can see what you're saying i understand and there was a breakthrough there was a breakthrough something that i have been trying to talk to him about um even when we weren't together, like something that I've been trying to explain to him. Um, and we, we've hit a, we hit a breakthrough and, and you know, that's, listen, I'm getting a lot of hate, whatever. Then the day you guys don't really know me. Uh, you guys don't know what I stand for, but if there's one positive, I'm going to take from this and I'm going to run with it to, to combat all the hate that I'm getting. It's this. So bitch, you knew. So bitch, you you knew, and you, and you, girl, get the fuck off my screen. Ne ne next, next case, next case, next. All right, y'all, Um, let's get into the more serious topics of this video. So I just want to give a trigger warning because this lawsuit that we're about to discuss is very, very dark. It's another lawsuit that has a trigger warning. It is a lawsuit that is being brought forth by the same uh, lawyers that represented Cassie um, against Diddy. This is the fourth lawsuit that we've seen Diddy get in the last month. And um, it is another victim alleging, uh, but this time they are alleging gang rape. All right. So I found this article in Rolling Stone. I also found the actual lawsuit itself, and I will go ahead and um, have the, the full complaint playing for you guys here while I read the Rolling Stone article. So, Sean Combs accused of gang of a 17 year old in new lawsuit. Jane Doe alleges Combs, former bad boy president Harf Pierre, and a third man trafficked and her at Combs' New York recording studio in 20. 
2003. So 2003. Sean Combs, his longtime lieutenant, Harv Pierre, and a third unidentified man allegedly gang- 17 year old girl inside Combs's recording studio in Manhattan in 2003 after the high school student was trafficked across state lines and plied with copious amounts of drugs and alcohol. An explosive new lawsuit filed Wednesday alleges. Keep in mind, y'all, I did give this a little arrest. I didn't want to like cover this every day because. It's very triggering for me as someone who has been a victim of this, number one. Number two, I have never liked Diddy. I have always felt that his day was going to come. So this is just seeing it actually come into fruition is shocking. But also just like these details are so dark and, you know, it's just a lot. It's a lot. But I want you guys to keep in mind, uh, Harv Pierre was sued all by himself two weeks ago um, in a separate lawsuit. So I think this is his second lawsuit in the last month, um, if not his third. But I, I know he's at least been sued twice. Um, and remember what I said. Remember what I said about Cassie's lawyers and how strategic they were in filing the lawsuit in a way that would make... Diddy and all his corporations, all his partners, um, all his investors, all be responsible for what happened to her. They're using the same approach here, and this is very, very good. And actually, um, I found a clip of a lawyer that explained it actually way better than I could because I'm not, I'm not an attorney, and I'll play that later on. But I say all that to say, with this lawsuit, they're bringing in Harv Pierre and another associate who most likely also worked at Bad Boy as well. Um, that makes that gives this a heavier tone. It, it makes it not only a gang, but a gang in a corporate setting almost. Do you understand that? Um, the new Jane Doe plaintiff, the fourth woman to accuse Combs of sexual in three weeks alleges that the three men took turns raping her in a bathroom at daddy's house recording studio when she was in high school and Combs was 34 years old. Why was his recording studio named daddy's house? That's just, that's very spooky to me. Very spooky, very dark, very intentional, very intentional to me. Um, Combs vehemently denied the uh, Combs vehemently denied uh, Doe's allegations in a statement issued shortly after the lawsuit was filed. Um, he did post this uh, to his IG. Uh, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have made uh, have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family and for the truth, Comb said in um, in this Instagram post. Bitch, you lying. We see you. You going to jail. Whoa, 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 jail. You going to jail. It's giving. Y'all killing me with this shit. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this shit. It's giving Robert. I can't help 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. Robert, We're gonna this let is the not camera true. Keep rolling. We don't believe you, bitch. We don't believe you. And in this lawsuit, I mean, the details are so disgusting. And they have receipts. Like, that's like... <laughs> I'm a fan of my name, bitch. We got the receipts. We have the receipts. And while her face is blurred in these pictures, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that if we unblurred these pictures, we would clearly see that this person was an underage person. And I don't give a fuck what her intentions were, what you thought her intentions were. Cause I went, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak on that too. But 
no matter how fast she may have been, you are 34 years old and it is illegal to have sex with a minor. So that alone, even if she was consenting, it is still a crime. I just want to put that out there for y'all. Because a lot of y'all, oh, but these teenagers be fast. And I don't give a fuck if she is Speedy Gonzalez, underlay, 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 mommy, E-I-E-I-O-O, -E -I -O -O, fast. It is still illegal. You can still go to jail for that. Okay? Um, lawsuit alleges Jane Doe was out with a friend at a lounge in the Detroit area uh, two decades ago when Pierre singled her out, complimented her appearance, and insisted her uh, insisted he was best friends with Combs. Pierre uh, pur purportedly told the teen that Combs would love to meet her and call Combs on his phone so the music mogul could personally invite her on an impromptu trip to New York abroad a private jet trafficking luring traffic like luring your power and your celebrity to traffic her the 14 page complaint alleges the private jet eventually transported the teen to Teterboro airport in new jersey where an suv whisked her uh pierre and the third unidentified man to the studio where Combs was finishing up work with a recording artist. The filing obtained by Rolling Stone features a mo multiple colored photos allegedly taken inside Daddy's house recording studio that night, including one where the teen is sitting on Combs's lap. The filing claims that the teen was a, was fed copious amount of intoxicants in, in Intoxin intoxicants, Lord have mercy, that words beat my ass. As Combs, Pierre, and the third man hit on her incessantly, oh Lord, it's late, I'm tired, and groped her body. Uh, as the team became more inebriated, uh, that everything started to blur. Combs allegedly led her to a bathroom, removed her skirt and underwear, and penetrated her from behind with his penis while she hung over the sink. The lawsuit filed in the Southern District of New York states. Ms. Doe did not consent to having sex with Mr. Combs, but he continued thrusting. At some point, Mr. Combs turned Ms. Doe around to face him. He told her that he could not orgasm and asked her to squeeze his nipples as hard as she could to get him off. He then turned her back around and continued to rape her, the lawsuit alleges. The lawsuit says that the teen was slipping in and out of consciousness when she looked up in the mirror above the sink and realized the unidentified man from the plane ride had replaced Combs and was now from behind. According to the filing, Combs was watching the assault from a chair just outside the bathroom. That matches Cassie's lawsuit. Same behavior, same tactics. Doe alleges the unidentified man ignored her pleas to stop, but eventually got out of the way so Pierre could take a turn. She claims Pierre first subjected her to non-consensual vaginal sex and that he finished by violently forcing her to give him oral. Miss Doe remembers that Mr. Pierre was sweaty and that he had difficulty breathing. I, um, I don't know why that just gave me a vision. It just gave me a vision of Mr. Clump. And I mean, Pierre was always a little husky. Uh, when Mr. Pierre finished, he left Ms. Doe in the bathroom alone. Ms. Doe fell into the fetal position and lay on the floor. Her vagina was in pain. Once the team regained her bearings, enough to walk with some assistance, she was taken back to the airport, flown to Michigan. The lawsuit that also names Daddy's House Recording and Bad Boy Entertainment as defendants says... She has very limited recollection of the return flight and only remembers being in her car sometime early in the morning, it states. Um, this happened at daddy's house. With bad boy employees, the bad boy CEO and bad boy employees. 
you're done. You're not winning this. You're going to settle it. And if you don't want to, you're going to be forced to. Period. Um, I want to bring up this clip that I found. Um, this is Simone. She actually was on Ready to Love. And I actually wanted to do a video on her and the guy that she ended up getting engaged to from the show. But uh, I ain't had nothing positive to say about his ass. And I feel like she would have caught some strays. So I never did the video. Um, but I, I, I'm, I've always been a fan of hers. Um, listen to her explain why it was very, very smart for Cassie's team to sue Diddy the way that they did and how you see them doing this three more times. And most likely they're gonna keep doing this because there's no way to lose. Her attorneys were really brilliant. They didn't sue just Diddy, they sued his corporation. They sure did. And they sued his corporations and sued as her, in her capacity as an employee. When you do that, it triggers commercial liability insurance. Yeah. And it triggers another policy called directors and officers. Okay. And we know he's a director Correct. of these companies as the CEO. So now you've got two policies. What happens then is it takes away Puffy's ability to settle. It's not his choice no more. So it's no longer personal accountability. It's yep. his organization. It's his organization. And it's no different than like if you hit somebody with your car. Mm-hmm. It, it, let's say you have State Farm. Mm. State Farm gets to decide to settle, not you. You could say, I didn't run the stop sign. That's not true. They're lying. If mm -hmm. State Farm says, we don't care. We did our investigation. We're selling. That's it. That's what happened here. So because they, add, they added those claims, the corporate insurance carrier got to say, read over and say, oh, hell no. We're giving her the money. We're it, hearing you. Um, Diddy's public reputation is done. It's done. Yeah. And if he wants to be able to leave anything to his children, he needs to walk away from all of these corporations. Damn, he got he can no longer be the, the head of his corporations. Well, remember, didn't I say directors and officers liability? Yeah. More than likely, what will happen is those insurance companies, they have the ability to say, we won't renew your policy if he continues to be a director or officer. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Like, you're done. And it's about time. These are your chicken coming home to roost. You're done. You're done. I'm just very happy to see giants fall. I'm not happy about what has happened to these women, but I'm very, very happy to see the tides turn and to see giants fall. It needs to happen. And there are so many more ditties. Shit, I could give you 10 more that I know right now. I could give you, I could name them to you. It is very disgusting what's happening, what's still happening to people. And there's so many women that are afraid to come forward and, and tell their stories and press charges and do all those things because then they have to deal with public perception. And that leads me to this. I went and I saw the commentary, like some of the commentary that is under the pictures of this young girl sitting on Diddy's lap is frightening to me. Um, I saw some of this commentary uh, under on, on the shade room, which is again, why I think the shade room, like neighborhood talk, like all these places really need to be abolished. They really do, they need to be abolished. Um, but I saw one comment, uh, she's 17, sitting in a grown, rich nigga lap, shake my head. She knew what she was doing. Again, let's say she knew what she was doing. Why don't you have more smoke for the 34-year-old who knows she's underage and who knows this is against the law, who knows he co he's coercing her? who knows that he's doing this at his place of business that he could lose because of this. Why don't you have more smoke for that? Why were you there at 17? He was 34. You knew what you were getting yourself into. I'm not hearing it. And mind you, these are women saying this. These are black women saying this. Why did you wait 20 years? I just want to know. How do you 
believe a comment like that after literally hearing Cassie's case. How? Like just Cassie's case alone. How do you leave a comment like that? She doesn't seem to be uncomfortable sitting on his lap with that skirt on though. These, like, these are women. These are women. These are women. Like, these are women saying this. Um, we really have to have a conversation about women, women in our community, black women, how you all will defend patriarchy to no end to the point where you will literally excuse a 17 year old cannot have sex with a 34 year old because legally she cannot provide consent in that state. And at the end of the day, why are you as a woman okay knowing that a man in his 30s is having sexual intercourse with a child, with a minor? Why are you okay with that? Why are you okay with that? Why are you more angry with her than you are with him? Especially when you see all these cases coming out. It, there, there's obviously a pattern here. Why are y'all okay with that? Y'all are disgusting. And to be honest, I really feel like black women, this is one of those instances where I can say black women are part of the problem. The way black women, you guys help the over-sexualization of young women. You guys know what it's like to be a 17-year-old. You know what it's like to have an old, a older person gaze at you in an inappropriate way. Why don't you guys ever find grace for other girls? Why? This helps men continue with this behavior. A lot of these men are rapists. Not just because they're rapists, but because they know that they're going to get away with it because at the end of the day, they know other black women are going to shame that black victim, that black female victim. Y'all are proving it with these comments. It's disgusting. Maybe Winnie Parker was right about y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe Winnie Parker was right about y'all. Black people do not really support black creators. No, but seriously though, this is like alarming. Alarming. Y'all, so it is Friday night, 9.13 at night, and I'm like sitting here editing um, this video. And child, earlier today I was filming uh, an episode of Listen to Black Men with Miles Jones and uh, we had Tyler Chronicles. We had a special guest, um, David Banna. Watching one. If she's if she shooting at a house. Yeah, right, right. So, Ooh, my favorite thing. Oh, 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 they already had lunch. Which means I'm going to make myself a plate, honey. Oh. Did you hear what he said? He said Jesse got her travel hair in. I'm screwed. Look at my Jesse. So they're clearly still finishing up an episode. So you know I saw the food downstairs. Let me go ahead and make myself a plate. <laughs> 
one thing about me. I'm going to eat, baby. All right. I'm going to find me the food, baby. You heard me? You heard me? All right, so I'm going to get my to-go plate. I'm going to give me some broccoli, some corn. Mm -hmm. I see fish. I'm definitely going to do fish. How are you? Huh? Oh my gosh! You're like a real person! Uh, Hi, I'm Lauren, by the way. Do you want to I'm Jesse. Nice to meet you. She says you're a real water, person. Yes. Uh, regular, sparkling. Oh, right. oh, cool. Yeah. Fiji is cool? That's fine. Yeah. Cool. My name's Jesse. Nice to meet you. Oh my gosh. No, I don't to meet you. Oh my gosh, this is like so corny, but obviously I'm a fan of your work. But you have a song with Mary Mary that I used to run into the freaking ground. Um, the Friends, Friends song. You want to know what's funny? Here now and then they go. You want to know what's funny about that? I don't know. Yeah. The girls got so much criticism for that song. Really? Yeah. And, um, that song actually <laughs> made me feel a certain kind of way about some Christian peoples. Because at that time, I was hurting so bad. And I was giving how I really felt. Yeah. And I was like, so... Somebody who's trying, hey, somebody who's trying to do right, that's yeah, what y'all gonna do when yeah. they come to you. I don't want to be a part of that if that's what it's gonna be about. I knew it was about spirituality and not yeah. people anyway. Yeah. But like, yeah. Right. And what's funny is they didn't really know <laughs> how big I was at the time. They didn't know. Yeah, they didn't know. Already cleaned the hair. It was so amazing. And those, and those two like girls. Well, you're an incredible talent. Appreciate it's it. an honor to meet you. Thank like, you. I love your artistry. Thank so you. Thank I'm you. really honored. We had Young Jock, y'all, the legend, the icon. Did you have a good time? I did. I had an amazing time. <laughs> Actually, um, this is the type of time that I needed. Right. It wasn't just what I wanted, I needed it. Great. And I come home and I'm about to edit this video. I was going to end it at, you know, the story that I shared. But y'all, there's been a whole update on this Jonathan Major shit that we have to get into. Let's get into it. So People Magazine released this article today. Jonathan Majors appears to admit physically attacking ex Grace Jabari in text messages entered into evidence. The text messages regarding an earlier incident were previously deemed inadmissible at trial. So this is regarding an earlier incident, not even the incident that they're in court for. In text messages between Jonathan Majors and accuser Grace Jabari, the Marvel actor appears to admit to physical violence against his now ex six months before Majors was arrested in March and charged with assault in a separate domestic violence case. He texts, I fear uh, you have no perspective on what could happen if you go to the hospital. Majors text 34. Majors text Jabari 30 in September 2022. They will ask you questions, and as I don't think you actually protect us, it could lead to an investigation, even if you do lie and they suspect something. In the text message, Majors also stated, it's just fake. But based on the messages put in, into evidence, it was not clear what he was calling fake, and no context was provided in court. In the text messages displayed to the jury and read into the record uh, by Jabari on her fourth and final day on the stand on Friday, Jabari appears to assure Majors that she would not blame him for allegedly causing an injury to her head. I will tell the doctor I bumped my head, Jabari cried as she read aloud the message in court. Then unable to continue through her tears, Assistant District Attorney Kelly Galloway took over. I will tell the doctor I bumped my head if I go. I'm going to give it one more day, but I can't sleep and I need some stronger painkillers. That's all. Why would I tell them what really happened when it's clear I want to be with you? The text messages, were, which were previously mentioned by prosecutors in uh, a 115-page pretrial filing in October are considered uh, Molino evidence, which the New York State Unified Court System defines as conduct that is uh, inextricably 
interwoven with the charge acts and which may provide necessary background information or explanation to the charge acts. (laughs) Y'all... Baby, this further explains why I believe Megan Good was a scheme that Todd set up to be this man's cleanup woman. And this makes this all even more trash to me. Like, this is like inexplicable. It's just diabolical. So basically, Jonathan Majors whooped that white woman's ass, told her to reach down in her purse. And find her inner Coretta Scott King and Michelle Obama. You know, apparently the notion is that as a black women, this is what we do. We let black men beat our ass and we take up for them. Right. That's what that says. Then he threatened to delete himself when he realized that the white woman couldn't find her inner Coretta Scott King deep down in her pussy. And then thought he was going to run off into the sunset with a black women's, a.k.a. Megan Good. I just want y'all to see the play here. I want y'all to see the play here. And I want y'all to understand the message that this sends. Okay? Please understand the message that this sends. For this, for this black man, for this young black man. Doing all he could. God. I can't. I can't even do it. I can't even bring humor to this because this is so fucked up on so many levels. Lock his ass up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jail. Throw him in jail. Yeah, put his ass in jail. Lock his ass up. Lock his ass the fuck up. Like, this is beyond diabolical. Just put his ass in jail. Next. Next. Put him in jail. Next. Next. The way I really want y'all to understand, the way his team, him and his team, tried to pull the wool over black people's eyes and play the young black man card. And oh my God, they're tearing down a black man card. And then you got Megan Good whisking her happy at, girl, get out of there. Leave. There's still time for you to leave. And we'll forget it. Leave. Leave. Risking a three-decade career over this, over some fucking civil rights dick, I'm sorry. No. 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 I know he over there giving you that damn civil rights dick. I know he giving you that wholesome dick. I know it. I just know it. I know it. He dresses like... I know he over there giving you that Selma dick. I get it. I get it. But baby, you're in LA. You can get that on every block. It's homeless niggas all over LA. And we all know homeless niggas know how to fuck. Because they fucking for their life. Girl, get you a homeless nigga. I'd rather see you with some homeless... I mean... To be honest, that's your that's the aesthetic you like, cause that's exactly how Jonathan Majors dresses. He dresses like a homeless person. So go ahead, and just give you the real thing. Get you the real thing, and get the fuck up out of there. We'll forget it. We'll forget it. But you need to get the fuck ASAP, okay? ASAP. ASAP. And, and 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 for those of y'all who were in my comments, oh, you know what? I don't know. This is it's giving Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. It was never giving that. It was never giving that. That text message thread that his lawyer released to TMZ always told me everything I needed to know. She is a battered woman. Point blank period. Okay? Again, y'all, drop down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts, child. Let me go ahead and... uh, Child, I'm going to go down the trap karaoke. I I need... I I need... I I, I just... I can't. This is just too much. I can't. And then you got Megan Good there just in it. And then he had Megan Good. He tried. He, there's a tweet that said he's so used to... He's so new to dating black women. He left her hair up. I just...
Mr. Majors, would you like to say anything at this point? Megan, get your ass out of there, please. Please, during black women's, y'all killing me with this shit. Get your ass up out of there. Bye. Bye. I can't. All these diamonds on my body and they crystal clear. I make magic with these hundreds, watch them disappear. Uh-huh. Big ol' raindrops up in my ear. If you gon' name drop, let's get it clear. Just say, woo!